There is a growing concern about the high levels of ammonia gas produced by agriculture in Northern Ireland. In this video, we will look at why ammonia has become an important environmental issue, where it comes from, and finally, some ways to reduce ammonia emissions. Northern Ireland has a high density of livestock, with protein forming an important part of livestock diets. Protein is the main source of nitrogen in livestock farming. Protein is digested by livestock and unused nitrogen is excreted in dung and urine. Ammonia gas is released when dung and urine mix, either on the shed floor or in slurry tanks. It's been calculated that 94% of ammonia emissions in Northern Ireland come from agriculture. By far the biggest proportion of this is from housed livestock. This chart shows the sources of Northern Ireland's ammonia emissions from agriculture. It's important to note that the combined sources of ammonia associated with housing livestock and manure spreading amount to 83% of the total figure. It's also been calculated that 69% of total agricultural ammonia emissions are from cattle. Professor Mark Sutton, a leading international expert on the emission, behaviour and fate of ammonia in the environment, recently visited Ballynahone Bog near Magara to find out how high levels of ammonia have affected this site. We're standing out here on Ballynahone Bog, which is a lowland raised peat bog in the middle of an agricultural landscape. The problem is that farms all around are emitting ammonia from livestock farming, particularly cattle urine and the fertilizers that's going up into the air and then coming down and landing on this peat bog. Look around you and look from a distance, it looks just like any other peat bog. But start zooming in and you find out that the ammonia is having substantial effects on the health of the bog. First off, and I think perhaps most critically, is the impact on the sphagnum moss. Now as you think about a bog growing, the sphagnum is the key component that's building the bog and preventing breakdown and storing carbon and letting the bog grow. What the ammonia does, it adds nitrogen into that system and also changes the pH, raising it, which means that the sphagnum starts decomposing. And you start with a fresh sphagnum. It's crisp and you've got the rich colors of reds and greens in a healthy environment. But come to a place like this, Ballinahone, many of the sphagnum start going dull green. And if you look around the ground, you can see some parts which are still surviving, others which have gone this dull, slimy color. And finally, parts of the ground that is hard to distinguish as to whether it was sphagnum ever at all. Of course, there's plenty of other plant and animal species out here on a bog. Perhaps the most characteristic is the heather, Coluna vulgaris, common heather, and that's also extremely sensitive to ammonia. The heather itself starts losing leaves and ultimately those algal slimes start coating the heather stems as well. We've had a quick look across the bog here and there are so many samples of damage we really don't have to look far. If it was rated out of 10, I'd probably give it a 4 if 10 was a fully healthy site and one was completely wrecked. So there's many plants living here but it's really not in a good way. We have seen how ammonia causes damage to our environment. So how can ammonia emissions be reduced? We'll now look at a number of measures that are being implemented at Caffrey's Dairy Centre. First of all, reduce protein diets. A balanced diet with reduced protein will lower the nitrogen intake of the animals, and this will reduce nitrogen excretion and in turn reduce ammonia emissions. When done correctly, milk yield is not affected, and it can also mean notable savings in feed costs. A second way to reduce ammonia is the use of specially designed floors. This floor profile is designed to allow urine to run off quickly into the channels, which reduces dung and urine mixing, and therefore ammonia emissions. These slats are designed to allow urine to drain quickly into the tank below, again helping to prevent dung and urine mixing. In addition, this slat design has flaps to prevent air exchange with the tank space, which further reduces the emission of ammonia. Another helpful step is to cover slurry stores. 
Covered slurry stores can emit up to 80% less ammonia than their uncovered counterparts. Grazing is another important way to reduce the emission of ammonia. Extended grazing helps reduce ammonia. We have extended the number of days cows are at grass. Ammonia emissions from grazing are lower because there is very little contact between dung and urine when cattle are at grass. Another effective measure is to spread slurry using the trailing shoe system. Slurry application using the trailing shoe system reduces ammonia emissions by 60%, meaning much more nitrogen available to the crop. Low emission spreading systems like the trailing shoe system are cost-effective solutions that reduce nitrogen loss from slurry, giving higher grass yields and reducing fertilizer costs. They are a very effective way to reduce ammonia emissions. In this video, we have highlighted how nitrogen loss as ammonia from livestock farming in Northern Ireland adversely affects sensitive habitats. In addition, we've looked at some practical ways to reduce ammonia emissions. Other methods are available and the most appropriate methods will depend on each individual farm circumstances. Ammonia emissions are a major challenge for all livestock sectors in Northern Ireland. DARA is engaging with stakeholders, AFPI and researchers in other regions to find innovative ways to meet the challenge of reducing ammonia emissions and bring designated sites back to favourable condition. Thank you for watching. For further information, please contact CAFRI's air quality team at Greenmount Campus.